All right. Well, I can see that uh, waiting that few minutes did indeed, as usual, uh, allow a lot of people to come flowing into the webinar uh, after they had registered earlier. Now, one thing I do want to point out is uh, thanks, first, for coming to the webinar and listening to uh, some of the new features and uh, things that we've added to Latitude. We're always trying to make it better, stronger, and faster. And a lot of the stuff that we're uh, – well, not a lot maybe, but at least a portion of what we're going to introduce today, some of the things we added in 802 and 803 – uh, we're, we're straight from customers, right? Customers said, hey, I love this, but how about this and that versus that and this, right? And then we made sense to us and we made that change. So you're going to see some of those things as we go forward. But first, what I want to point out is on the right-hand side of your screen is the GoToWebinar software. You probably see that little thing sitting over on the right-hand side. If you do need to collapse it, you can click on the orange arrow towards the top of your piece of software and it will collapse it and if you click it again of course it'll come back uh, with it displayed on your screen go ahead and take a look down towards the bottom and you will see a couple of sections I do want to talk about the first being the questions section uh, I've got my boss and longtime FLIR training manager Chris Winbun on the line along with some product managers who are going to be watching that question queue looking for any questions that maybe I didn't explain exactly uh, or fully uh, you know and needed a little bit of clarification they're there for us uh, I've got my full team uh, in play uh, right now just hoping that you guys have, do have some questions that we have not answered straight up from the webinar uh, and they can actually uh, jump into the mix uh, and solve those issues for you guys so and women so anyway, uh, in addition to the first place that I pointed out, the question section, you'll note there is a handouts section. And in that handout section, you'll see two handouts. One is the 802 and the other is the 803 release notes. And those are very important. That's what we're going to be talking about here over the next uh, 45 minutes or so. And I want to make sure that you guys do have the sort of underpinning documentation that shows and explains all of the things I'm about to explain right here. So go ahead and download that uh, from the handouts section at your leisure. And as you do that, or possibly maybe you want to wait for a little bit later, we're just going to move forward. As you can see, I have the correct date on the bottom right-hand corner, October 3rd, 2018. Maybe it's a little bit farther forward for you if you're in the uh, Eastern Asian uh, area. But either way, for me right now on the East Coast, this is my second webinar, and it is 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So let's move forward. As you can see, this is our webinar agenda right away. Release notes, boom, we've already talked about it. They are in and attached in uh, the software for the GoToWebinar, and you can download them at your leisure at any time uh, as we're speaking and the webinar is engaged. As you can see, the next two things, of course, follow uh, sequentially, right? We're going to show those uh, Latitude Update 8.0.2 features along with the 8.0.3 features. Now, you'll notice, because I have them separated, that there is uh, quite a few more 802 features, but uh, some of the 803 features I really enjoy, and uh, I'm going to hold off telling you what they are until we get to that little bullet point. And as you can see, after the 803 features, we uh, are going to talk a little bit about the 8.0 licensing, right? It's different than the 7.0 and prior licensing. We want to make sure that everybody is aware how easy it is. couple-step process. We'll walk right through it. You'll see how easy it is. Uh, following that, we're going to take a few questions. If uh, my team has not solved uh, you know, any of those questions that have been asked by anybody uh, in this webinar as I rambled on and on, or possibly there's a great question that somebody asked and uh, we want to add a little bit more color to that. And of course, we'll open it up towards the end right before we get to the last thing which you can see there is the quick live demo. Uh, most of the things that you see here, we're just, we, we really want to point out the fact that uh, the 8.0.2 and 8.0.3 updates are designed basically to lay the groundwork for some of the real magic that's coming uh, you know, in the next couple of months, uh, six months to a year, et cetera. Uh, I've heard basically a little bit about it, uh, and I'm excited, right? some of those things that are coming, uh, and some of the things that we've added to 802. Uh, excuse me, 8.0.2 and 8.0.3 are going to allow us to be able to uh, make sure that we can offer those uh, features and functions to our customers. So you can see right here, boom, it's got its own uh, slide to begin it. And again, 802, if you call up tech support and they ask you what version you're using, you don't need to know the little numbers after that last dot. It's simply 802, we'll know exactly what you're talking about. 803, same thing. And as we go forward, we're going to try to keep it as simple as that so it's very easy for people to understand. So as we go a little bit forward, the very first thing that we uh, have in our 802 is, is some advanced functionality in our failover archiver process. Now, 
Uh, as you can see, I have two paragraphs down towards the bottom on the left-hand side. One is unicast and one is multicast. In a multicast environment, let's jump right down there really quick, you can see that uh, because of the way the uh, structure is in place, and again, if you have any problems, you can see over there on the number three, contact enterprise uh, security for correct configuration. Uh, but uh, multicast does allow you to have uninterrupted live views, whereas unicast, because as you see the picture in the top right-hand corner, our, our archivers in latitude can act as failover archivers for any other archiver, one, two, six, however many you have, uh, based all on system resources. However, in a unicast environment, of course, because they're sort of pinging, right, those devices that they're acting as failovers for and waiting for no response, right? There has to be some period of time where that occurs. Uh, you can see in our unicast environment, in that paragraph that I have there, uh, we've got that lower than about two minutes on average. Uh, some very, very large systems might experience a little bit longer time than the two minutes, but that's what we're shooting at right now. And you can see in the parentheses right after that, in that unicast paragraph, uh, our goal is as close to zero as possible, and that is what we're shooting for as we go forward. We're constantly reducing that, uh, basically that time where you have no video. So uh, again, there are some other uh, things to think of when you're using the multicast environment, uh, and they are listed right here on the right-hand side. Of course, they have to be uh, have the function or the feature that ONVIF compatible uh, capabilities to be able to uh, you know, support the continuous multicast. That's the number one. And the number two thing basically lets you know that there needs to be a recording stream uh, in the mix, right? If you're just shooting a live stream, uh, possibly the multicast will not ensure the uninterrupted live view. You need to have a recording stream as well, which anybody that knows Latitude will understand. You can actually uh, sort of unhinge them, right? By default, the recording is the same as the live. You, you can easily uncheck that box and use two separate streams. Uh, for that for the two individual functionalities so as we go here you can see this is just a uh, sort of background slide both of these things uh, the FFmpeg which you see on the top left and the H.265 or HEVC and you can read the words for what that stands for right below it these are some underpinnings that we're adding to our system right now to make it uh, available to add even further functionality as we go forward uh, especially when 9, right, Latitude 9 comes out. Uh, it's on the roadmap, and I can't wait for it to show up. Uh, some of the things I've heard that are going to be in that are pretty exciting to me. I'm a Latitude trainer. It's what I do for a living, so, uh, you know, I can't wait to see some of those new functions. But if you look at the top part, the FFmpeg is just a software uh, library sort of project that people use. A lot of, you know, pretty much every manufacturer uses to do various things, and uh, with that brand new FFmpeg as it goes forward, uh, it allows us to just do more things, which you're going to see some of that functionality based on, at least partially, this new FFmpeg library uh, in some of the following slides. Now the H.265 uh, functionality, we're building it into our structure right now. Uh, it is not an actual H.265 format at the moment. However, uh, we're building that infrastructure, as I mentioned. So when 9 comes out, which will be the next major release, uh, we will be prepared. So uh, both of these things allow us to build that fundamental building blocks to allow us to move forward uh, with new functionality and features that our customers need and want. Now, right here, you can see, uh, you know, I've broken it down into a couple of different slides. You get a couple, you know, six or seven slides for the 8.0.2 and maybe three or four for the 8.0.3 with one really important one, I think, or at least one that I like in the 8.0.3 that we'll see going forward. But this one right here, if you see the graphics that are down towards the bottom, the two screens on the left-hand side represent Control Center. Uh, the left one is, of course, just tools and options. But if you actually do an export, you get an, ex uh, an advanced functionality button. And if you click it, that's what you see in the middle, the advanced export screen. And then on the far right, of course, is the representation of the easy client, different sort of visual format. But if you can see all of them now uh, have that MP4 uh, embed the OSD choice. Uh, when you do export. Now, look a little bit above those three screens and you'll see the double asterisk sentence and I've bolted it even to draw your attention to it. Uh, some of my product managers wanted me to point out and make sure that people understood that that watermark, that, excuse me, that watermark validation, which used to be only in DVT, right? Back in the day, we just had DVT and AVI. Uh, that watermark validation, which is very important when you're submitting evidence to court in particular, uh, is now available on all three 
types of our export formats, DVT, uh, AVI, which has been around for a long time, and then uh, the new uh, cousin on the block, the MP4 exports, which I'm a big fan of. And if you look down towards the very bottom of the screen, you'll see in Control Center, the default is DVT, which it has always been. It's still what we recommend. Uh, however, on the right-hand side, you can see the Easy Client, uh, and its default is MP4. So if you want to unify that, make sure both of them are doing the same thing. Uh, you would need to go ahead uh, ahead of time and make sure that they are the same because they start off by default uh, being different. Now, these two things are, I love these improvements, right? They seem small. But in reality, they really make uh, the operator's job a whole lot easier and faster and better. And you can see it's broken down into two paragraphs, and I have two giant pictures to the right-hand side with arrows indicating which one is which, right? The top one is hovering. And if you see on the timeline itself right here, simply hovering your mouse over the timeline will show you a representation of the video that that is in that time frame. It does not change your background display area, which is right here in the top right corner. Now down at the bottom, and that, that's you know great because sometimes you want to keep that stuff. Maybe you're investigating something and you've already got the spot that you need, but you want to look back a little bit further left or a little bit further to the right or whatever and see if there's additional supporting evidence possibly, uh, which would cause you to you know move in a different direction. So adding this ability to hover over the top and see the video that is at that area. We're going to see it in our live demo, uh, but you can see that it is one of those improvements. And I, I've actually seen this in my certification classes. A lot of people have been asking for the hovering and scrubbing. So anyway, hovering is good enough. Uh, scrubbing, which we're about to describe right now, and we're going to be doing both of these things to beat the band when we do our live demo. But I really like the bottom one. Uh, scrubbing allows us to grab this time indicator, right? The time display indicator that's on the timeline that actually shows you what is being displayed in this uh, pane right here. If I grab it with my mouse and I drag it to the right or drag it to the left, I can actually do uh, you know, basically a custom controllable fast forward and reverse uh, just by my hand movements. And again, very uh, powerful when you're investigating video, you don't know when something happened, you're trying to find the actual incident, the ability to hover and find different uh, you know, things without actually displaying it, and then further scrubbing. Uh, which does actually change this display, are, are two pretty powerful tools when you put them together. So uh, well, I'll be glad to show you those when we go to our live demo. Next screen, if you look at the very top, I've split this into two, of course, but they sort of work in conjunction with each other. At the top, we have our uh, further easy client enhancements. As a matter of fact, when we get to our live demo, you're going to be seeing primarily the easy client because most of these functions you'll see. Now, now I, I do want to point this out. And I've, I've talked about the Easy Client for more than two years now. Uh, the Easy Client initially was intended to be a supplement to Control Center, right? The big workhorse. Uh, but we've had other clients that said, you know, I love this Easy Client. How about if you had this? How about, you know, I know Control Center can do this. How about if the Easy Client could do it too? And we've added that as well. So there's been so many things added to that Easy Client. I think you, uh, if you haven't seen it in a while, please, you know, just log in. All you got to do is have a web server and a transcoder installed in your Latitude system, and you've got yourself an easy client. So anyway, the top stuff up at the here on this slide, the user-specific session information. This is very important. Say I'm an operator, and I use easy client a lot, and every time I log out and I log back in again, I have to replace all my site filters and the live cameras displayed and all that. That takes me time, takes away from my job. We've now added that to the system. You're going to see that when I go to the live demo. Uh, also, you know, live cameras displayed, viewed alarms, export format, a couple of other things. Anything that we can save as a user-specific session a component, we're going to do that. And when you log back in, it's going to be very familiar to you because it's going to look just like what it did before you logged out. Now, down at the bottom, that top bookmark, excuse me, shortcuts, right? We can see it's keyboard shortcut section on the bottom of the screen. The top one is in conjunction with that live cameras displayed uh, user-specific session information we talked about. For instance, when I go to log in to the session that I have pre-planned uh, for this webinar, you're going to see the last live cameras that I had displayed, or the number, anyway, that I had displayed. And if there's too many, or if I maybe every time I log in, I don't want to see all those cameras, I can simply use this quick shortcut, control backspace, right? I mean, my hands are not that big, but looking at my keyboard, this is a two-hand option. Uh, Left-hand control, right-hand backspace, boom. 
now those cameras all go away and you have yourself a fresh palette that you can choose to open the cameras that you want for that particular session. But lots of people have asked us, hey, how about saving all that stuff so every time when I log in it looks just like I'm used to? And we did that, and that's what you see at the top. Down at the bottom uh, is another new shortcut for the Easy Client, and as you can see, it's the Control Plus, whatever that squiggly line is that's below your escape key and to the left of your one key. Uh, you don't have to shift up to get to it. It simply control that key, and it toggles back and forth between live and playback in that Easy Client. All right, now there are a couple of things here, as you can see. I just muted myself so I could sneeze. Thank you for waiting. Uh, and you can see I've broken it down into three sections right here just because they're important things to note in the Easy Client. Again, further enhancements to the Easy Client. But I don't know if they actually uh, have weight enough to have their own slide. So if you look at the top left hand of the three sections, you can see that in the time bar across the top, which if you've been using latitude, you understand, is represented also by the yellow bar on the timeline. If you change the yellow bar, you change the time from the from and to. If you change the from and to in this bar right here that you're seeing, you change that yellow line at the bottom. So what if you came to the conclusion that I found my starting point, but I either want to just display or export possibly a, a very specific amount of time, right? Maybe your media that you export to the police, it's they love two minutes and 30 seconds of video. You'll see when we get to the demo how easy that is. I simply double click this spot at the top. Now keep in mind, the far left one is hours, right? That took me a second or two to figure out. You type in zero, zero, and then zero, two, and then 30, and you got yourself a two minute and 30 second view, right? Right in the easy client uh, and easily exportable by uh, basically two clicks. All right, down in the bottom left-hand side of this uh, triple slide, you can see the improved thumbnail rendering. Now, of course, this is just a visual graphic uh, sort of representation of that. You will see it in the Easy Client when we do our live demo. Now, uh, if you've been recently using the Easy Client, you will notice the difference, right? I love it. Uh, one of the things that I used to think to myself when I'm using the Easy Client, I'd say, hey, I love the Easy Client, but I wish these thumbnails would render faster. My wish has been granted. Boom, 8.0.2. You'll see when we go into it, they are much faster. Now, further uh, and finally, on this slide, on the far right-hand side, uh, I like these slides, right? I like to talk about what they mean. However, I don't like seeing them in my live view, right? Because what do they tell me? They tell me i got a problem. Uh, latency indicators, you can see represented by both of these uh, images right here. If it's yellow, well, you got a little bit of latency, right? Three to 10 seconds, it's a pretty big range. Uh, if you're red, well, you got real problems, right? You're more than 10 seconds delayed in delivering that video or audio or both, uh, you know, to the panes that you're looking to see it in. So keep that in mind. Again, I like the warnings, right? And if you check out the warnings, you can see, we even give you a little bit of information on possibly what you might do to overcome this. Uh, so I always love that. Uh, but there you can see uh, what the latency indicators look like. Hold on. I don't know if my allergies are acting up or not, but that was a double sneeze that you did not hear as I muted my uh, headset. Now, as you can see on your screen right here, this is out of latitude, right? This is the first look at something outside of latitude, but still within our United VMS. And the other two portions of our United VMS, in addition to latitude, of course, horizon and meridian. Horizon, meridian, and latitude, of course, again, all share the control center client application. That's what makes us a one of the best answers for people who are growing uh, and getting larger, growing extra sites, etc. Uh, you can move from one look, from one platform basically to another as seamlessly, especially for support, you know, with the control center application. Now, what you're looking at right here on the screen on the bottom uh, is something that looks kind of identical except for the different names of the platforms. Welcome to Horizon, welcome to Meridian. The reason you're seeing that is Meridian and Horizon share their own uh, admin center, right, which is different than latitude. However, as I mentioned, control center is universal across the board. This was a, uh, you know, recommendation from a couple of our users, and they said, you know what, I got multiple sites. I wish it was easier for me to log into those multiple sites and know which one was which. Boom, 
there's the answer right there. So now each system can have their own name. It makes that multi-system management a whole lot easier for our customers. And again, we listened to what they asked us for, and we said, sure, we could do that. That makes sense to us. All right, on this slide right here, I've broken it down into Control Center at the top, just a couple of things, keyboard shortcuts. And down at the bottom, the Admin Center Edition, basically just a, a better or a, so more understandable depiction uh, of the oldest data that you have in your database and how much you can expect uh, to get out of your remaining database. Uh, and any questions that, that came up, I asked somebody about this, and they said, well, if there's any questions, just let us know. So if there is, please, you know, let me know. You can see on the software on the right-hand side, they go to webinar software. My name should be in there, marty.major at fleer.com, and you can see my email address, which I just spoke. Send me an email if you're confused or if you have any questions about that, because we're really not going to show this. It's just one really page, and it's going to look just like it does right here in the slide. Now, up on the top, of course, you can see there are some more or some additional keyboard shortcuts. Why? Because we've added some different cameras that have the picture-in-picture -picture functionality. So we needed some shortcuts to be able to handle that functionality as well. Some of these down here at the bottom, right, F11, I think everyone knows that's the full screen for your video. But it does full screen all of your video. Uh, I, I did not know this, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, two years ago, somebody in class actually told me, it's like, how, how about how can I full screen one pane of video, like, you know, whatever pane of, say, a quad view that I already have highlighted, what if I just want that to full screen, not all of the video panes in my layout, and that's F12, right, and I learned it from there, and when you're in F12, uh, and I know this from experience each week when I do my latitude certification classes, you can toggle back and forth between F11 and F12, uh, you know, full screening all of your video or full screening one pane of your video, and then switching the panes that you want to look at, so trying out some of these shortcuts, uh, you know, it's always nice. Uh, does everybody use shortcuts? No, probably not. But the, those that do, maybe they get a little bit out of them that some people don't without using them. All right, you can see this flash screen right here for the 803 update. As I told you before, we don't really care about those last four. Now, we care. No, I'm not saying we don't. But uh, I'm saying for your purposes, all you need to know is 803. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of, those new, some of those new functions that we've added to 803 going forward. And here it is. I couldn't even wait. Uh, my favorite one. Uh, it is a 16-pane live view in the Easy Client. However, it comes with an asterisk, as you can see, above and over to the right-hand side. Now, before this 803 latitude update, we used to be able to, in Chrome and Opera, see nine live cameras. Whereas, if you look down at the little bottom part of the box on the right-hand side right there, Internet Explorer and Edge uh, are limited to six. That's what they've always been limited to. That's what they're still limited to. Now Chrome and Opera has advanced even further, beyond 9, all the way to 16. So there you go. That's why I hovered the uh, red box around it to indicate this is live view, right? This gives us – and customers since the very beginning have saying, you know, hey, how about more cameras? Hey, how about more cameras? So there you go. Now we have 16 live cameras in Chrome and Opera. Keep in mind, you need to have a machine and a web browser and Internet capacity to be able to handle 16 streams, right? I could – you know, potentially, if I wanted to, if I didn't have all those resources, try to log into a system that had 16 cameras displayed, and I could, you know, crush myself, basically, with bandwidth. So just like control centers, same way. Uh, you have to understand the machine that you're on, whether it's a web browser for the easy client or it's control center on a, you know, client machine, uh, to make sure that you have enough resources to be able to handle all the horsepower that's needed to run some of the applications that we're running. All right, next one, interleaved MP for exports, right? We already talked about the embedded OSD, and you can see that on the right-hand side, right above the little red square. Uh, you did not see this before, right? Because I was showing you this uh, from the 802 update. This is now the 803, so not only do we have the embedded OSD, which we already talked about, a little checkbox right here. Now we have the additional interleaved export. Now, what does that mean? In a nutshell, it basically means that back in the day before we had interleaved, we used to have to export, if there was audio, two separate files, audio file and a video file. Now, when you're submitting evidence to court, which I have vast experience back in the day, uh, you need to make sure that the chain of evidence is uh, seamless, and it makes it a whole lot easier, as you can see in this last paragraph right above the validated button. Uh, the solution is basically and something we've just now added, uh, to interleave the audio and video into one file. And then as you export it as one file, that's when we apply that validation to it. So you can actually come back into Control Center and validate the file has not been tampered with. All right. 
let's see. Let's go a little forward. We're getting close to the end of this content before we go to live stuff. We're gonna, we are going to take some questions here. Uh, so I'm just getting my boss a chance to uh, get prepared as I lead into asking him if we have covered all those questions. But before we do that, you can see on this slide right here, we have a couple of things. Now, these are enhancements to our alarm functionality. Anybody that has used our alarms before, if you look in the top left image, you can see that checkbox right there that says force adding description unclear. I'm a huge fan of this box, right? Because as a former integrator, former administrator, if I had a series of alarms that occurred over, I don't know, whatever period of time I wanted to look at, you know, uh, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever that is, if every time one of my operators cleared an alarm, they added some context to the alarm itself, you know, nothing to see here. This was that guy that, you know, had a a uh, standing order not to show up, whatever it is, over a period of aggregate time, I'm able to make my alarms better and stronger and things of that nature. That's why I like the forced adding description on alarm. So what we've done now, as you can see by these two pictures, top left and top right, uh, we have added the ability now to have pre-configured uh, responses, right? You can still use free form and that's used to be what it was. It was just free form. If somebody had that box checked before 8.03, uh, and they went to clear the alarm, a little box would pop up and say, you know, enter text, and you'd have to do that. So now we give you the option of having some uh, pre-configured responses. You can see it on the left-hand side how we add one and just type it in so it's available. And then on the top right-hand side, this is the uh, sort of what you see in Control Center. Now keep in mind, uh, as you can see, this is still highlighted. I can choose from this list of pre-configured responses, but that does not stop me from the freeform response that I've always had by being able to type in whatever I want to. So you have both options. Now we're trying to make it easier, faster, and better. You'll see as the, some of the slides we go forward, uh, in addition to the enhanced alarm functionality here, how it works with PTZs and things of that nature you're going to see uh, on a couple slides forward. Okay, one slide forward. How about that? Now you're looking at this slide, right? It, uh, our analytics that we can apply to pretty much any camera uh, using this TRK101 box we've got right here. We've added some alarm functionality uh, or alarm handling functionality to increase uh, our customer's ability to be able to use uh, both the analytics and the PTZ functionalities. And as you can see in the second paragraph right above that blue bell, uh, for further details, see the release notes. Uh, and if you have any questions after seeing those release notes, uh, send me an email. I'll get it to the right people that can get you the answer. But you can see uh, basically by the graphics here, we've added some additional functionality to not just alarms, but how our analytics work with alarms as well. All right, now uh, you can see by the two arrows, well, I started with the first paragraph in the sort of middle uh, top left, uh, the ability to change your password uh, or change the default password on any camera attached to the Latitude system is not new, right? That's what the top paragraph is indicating. I have a little red arrow over on the right-hand side of it, uh, which is not in the software, but I put it there to point out the fact that the change password button has been there for uh, at least a couple of updates uh, at this point, probably all the way back to the first 8.0 update. However, if you look to the right-hand side, which is what the blue arrow down at the bottom is pointing to, we've added some additional functionality again you know, responses from customers. They said, hey, this is great. Uh, you know, I'd like to be able to confirm my password, make sure I don't fat finger it and, you know, put the password in there wrong and all of a sudden it's locked in. And for those of you that uh, have a problem with entering the same word twice in the password and confirm password field, if you really need to, you now have the ability to choose the show password field and then you can actually visually see that they're both the same before you go to apply. All right, now, as I mentioned on that... Uh, webinar agenda slide, I did want to talk about how easy the 8.0 licensing is. And if you can see, you know, if you're reading the uh, sort of bullet points up from the top, reading it down, uh, it's basically going to be the same thing that I'm saying here. If I'm looking at the picture on the left-hand side at the bottom, I need to enter my activation key, which is provided by our operations team here at FLIR, and then I click on generate request, the orange button that's right there uh, to the right of that left-hand picture. Once I do that, that's going to create a text file, and I will possibly put it, you know, I could put it wherever I want to put it, but basically I need it available because as soon as I generate that report, if you look below the browse button, you can see the licensing website link to that page. So once I have my request file, and it should be named, you know, request dash whatever your IP address is of the machine, uh, you go to the licensing web page, 
or website, excuse me, and once you get there, it will ask you for that request file. You upload that request file to the licensing website, and it says, hey, thank you, here is your license file now. And it gives you the license file, which you then download to your desktop or wherever you like. And then you simply browse to that file. As you can see, the picture on the right-hand side indicates over here. Uh, you've got your license activation code up here. You generate the report. You upload it to the website. Website then, in turn, gives you your license file. You download it to your location. You browse to this location using this button right here. Once you browse to that license file, which is a bin uh, format, dot .bin, it says on the next slide, uh, then you simply install a license and you're done. Walk yourself right through the quick configuration wizard. Now, uh, just as easy to install a Latitude license for a brand new install, updating your Latitude license is just as easy. However, you're in Latitude already, so you're in Control Center. So you can see on the left-hand side picture, you're in your system settings. You simply uh, come to this field right here, uh, tell the, uh, the system basically with the bottom box that you want to install a new license, right? Maybe you got yourself some new cameras, a couple of features maybe you've added you didn't have before, you got some licenses for, and then everything is the same as what you did when you initially installed based on the picture on the right-hand side. You install that new activation key that you've just gotten from operations. You click on generate request. It gives you the request file. You upload that to the license website, which is the blue link right below the browse button right there on the right. And then you download that bin file to some location that you can browse to uh, with that browse button and install license and you're done. So this is a very, very easy process uh, of installing this. Now, seven was pretty easy too, a little bit different. Uh, but once we got to eight, uh, I can't think of another way that I could make this easier. Uh, you know, unless I could just blink three times like <clears throat> what's her name used to do back in uh, that old TV show from the 70s. But now we've gotten to the question section. We've gotten all the way through those new functions and features of 802 and 803. And this is a great time to bring in my boss, Chris Winbun, who's been monitoring the queue to see if we have any questions that either we could not answer or have not answered or may be important enough to share with the whole crowd. Chris, what do you got? Hey, Marty, uh, looks like the question queue is clear. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is what I like about my team. They TCB take care of business. That's awesome. All right. Well, what you'll do, what we'll do then is go to the very next slide and I see no reason. Oops. Went back one slide by accident to not go to the live demo, which I have. All right. What's up slide. There we go, uh, to the live demo. So now I will escape. Could have done that, but I was annoyed that it didn't work. Uh, and I've already connected myself. As you can see that I'm connected here now. Uh, on the east coast of the United States, it is not light out. So you can see that I am in playback, right? indicated by here. Uh, and there's a couple of things. And what I did for the first webinar today was after we got through the slides, I wrote down, well, actually, before I got through those slides, but I had written this down before. And I just want to make sure that all the stuff that we covered in those slides uh, is demonstrated right here, right? And it shouldn't take us that long. I see we're already at 35, 36 minutes into the webinar, the webinar. So give me about 10 minutes to explain and show all the things that we just explained on the slides. And then we'll open it up again to see if we have any questions or concerns or possibly something that needs to be clarified a little bit better than I explained. So what we're gonna start with is my two favorites and that's why I'm in playback right here. Uh, if you remember, we had that one slide that covered both uh, hovering and scrubbing. Right? So you can see I'm on a timeline right here, uh, even though the picture that's right here is stopped right here because that's what I wanted. Maybe I, you know, maybe I'm looking for my uh, stolen car in a parking lot or something. Right. So I've got my video here. Maybe somebody's, you know, acting suspicious, hanging out around my car. So I've got them. I've located that and I want this to stay here. But maybe I want to look back a little bit before. Right. And see, maybe, uh, you know, or we'll go a little bit further into it and see if when did my car actually disappear without changing uh, the display screen right here. So hovering uh, is simply hovering your mouse over the timeline, as you can see me doing on various spots right here. Sometimes I miss it a little bit. Uh, and it's simply to be able to display what video is at this location where I hover without changing my uh, time screen right here. Now, if I do need to change this time screen, well, that's what scrubbing is all about. And we're going to show that right here. Now, scrubbing uh, is done by grabbing onto this sort of time display thing right here and grabbing it with my left mouse button and dragging it left and right. And you can see I'm basically scrubbing my timeline. 
uh, you know, through this webinar, it might be a little bit choppier than I'm actually seeing it, but uh, from my vision, it's it's very similar to what we used to do back in the day with our, uh, you know, the old analog DVRs and the jog wheels we used to have, where you'd spin it left and the video would go left, and you'd spin it right and the video would go right. Very similar functionality. And again, uh, what, what I've noticed just from my own experience, when you're trying to follow one thing, in a scene that has a lot of things, right? Maybe in a crowd or you're trying to find one person, the ability to be able to scrub along your video and follow what you're looking for uh, is a huge benefit. Uh, it just is, I mean, uh, again, from my own experience. Uh, and uh, if any of the people who are listening to this webinar now are familiar with YouTube, uh, YouTube is very similar to this, right? You can do the same thing. Uh, we can actually uh, hover, right, to see what's here or we can scrub the timeline. Uh, so I think most people, uh, once they, it's a great reason, I think, to upgrade, right? If I have 801 or 80, whatever the previous ones are, simply the scrubbing and hovering uh, would make me want to upgrade. Just makes my job easier as an operator, right? Using the easy client. All right, uh, so that's covered. I'll check that off. Now let's uh, talk about the save settings uh, and stuff that we've got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle back and forth, right, between live and playback. Anybody familiar with the Easy Client already understands it's one of the things that's not like Control Center. Uh, in Control Center, I can look at live and playback at the same time. In the Easy Client, that is not the case. So I'm going to go back to live. Now notice, I didn't tell these six cameras to show up over here. It recognized that's what I had last time. I was in live view, and then just displayed it again. So I have a couple of choices. I could log out and log back in. As soon as I log back in, it would display these exact same six. Or I could toggle back and forth between live and playback. And if you were paying attention in that slide presentation, you probably saw, and now you'll see, right? My mouse is right here in the middle of the page. It will not move. And I'm going to toggle back and forth. I'm in live right now. I want to see playback. That's control and that little squiggly line next to the one key. I do it. Boom. Now I'm in playback. I want to go back to what I was looking at before. Same thing. Control, squiggly line next to the one key. And it puts me right back into live. Now, again, what if I log into Easy Client? Last time I was in there, I had 17 cameras open. Well, we all know that's a lie, right? Because 16 is the brand new uh, upper limit that we could even do. So if somebody tells you that, you know they're lying. But basically, I've got five right here. Maybe I don't want to see all these five right now because I'm logging in for a new session. That's that other shortcut key that I mentioned, the two-handed move, the control backspace, which you're about to see right here. Control backspace, boom, knocks out all my cameras. Now I put in the cameras that I want to take a look at simply by clicking one time. All right. So hovering and scrubbing, we covered it. Save the settings. Well, we didn't see it necessarily, but you can see it here. I'll show you that real quick. Here's two cameras, right? I'm going to go ahead and i got to move this software out of the way a little bit because it's in my way. But I'm going to come over here. I'm going to log out, and I'm simply going to log right back in, and you'll see the save session settings because it's going to show me those same live cameras that I already had open. So there you go. There's proof of that. So you know that I was not lying to you. Uh, now, specified length, which is something that we showed in the slide decks. Let's go back to playback again. And the specified length, that's this little box right here. And you can see when I first go here, uh, you know, right now, by default, it's just five minutes. And that's what I have from this drop down menu. I've done many easy client webinars, and this has been the same since the beginning, so I think most are familiar. If I wanted to see the last hour, the last day, et cetera, I would simply click that choice, and it would adjust on the timeline. Now, the top part right here, which is the from and the to fields, uh, are those things that we used to control the time. Now, I almost never do that. I simply use my timeline here and change the uh, length, basically, of the little yellow bar. And when the little yellow bar is chosen, the beginning and the end, it's represented by the thumbnail display across the bottom and the time across the top. So what if I wanted to come right here and say, OK, this was the very beginning. Maybe right there is the beginning of what I wanted to export or even just look at. Uh, I can use that new functionality. I can just double click right into this field right here. Keeping in mind, this is hours, this is minutes, and this is seconds. So if I wanted to say, I don't know, look at just two minutes and 30 seconds, or even export just two minutes and 30 seconds, no problem. Zero, 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 two, uh, oops. and then uh, see it, it hosed it up. Well, all right, well, bad example. If I want to do two, I did two minutes and 30 seconds in the earlier webinar, and it worked beautifully. 
So uh, good thing I'm not in tech support where you have to make stuff work. I'm in training where I just show stuff. Uh, but basically, you can see what happens. I double click. I put in whatever I like, and then it actually adjusts to my preferences, whether it's just viewing or uh, because this yellow timeline is also uh, tied right to this export button. If I want to export a certain thing, if I click export right now, it's going to try to export from the beginning of the yellow line to the end of the yellow line, right? which is much too big for this. So say I put it down here. The thumbnails are rendering much faster than normal across the bottom. And I just sneezed again, and they're making me into a liar. But again, we don't, we're not concerned about that. Usually, that's what I see. Again, we have a, a sort of network connection that is not a normal situation. But you can see uh, I've got a very small uh, field right here, and I did want to show one of those other things that we talked about. In the slide presentation on the left-hand side, you can see it right here, embedded subtitles, right? That's the OSD, things in the camera, etc. It's the embedded OSD we first talked about in 802. Very, very important when you're in uh, introducing uh, video evidence to court. Uh, having separate files, having some that are validated, some are not, uh, can always run into problems. The defense lawyer's job is to throw, you know, chinks into the armor of the prosecutor. So, uh, you know, the, the more you can lock this down and make it so we can show chain of evidence and you can show how these files can be validated still that nobody has tampered with them. Uh, that's, it's just, you know, to your benefit. So we also, have, we have two different things, right? The embedded subtitles, which we talked about, uh, and the uh, inter interlevered uh, choices that we've got. So we still have the same, all the same choices that we're used to uh, from the exports section. Uh, now, what I'm going to try to do, uh, and again, I'm in Chrome right now, which will allow me to do this. Uh, I'm going to go back to my live screen. And if you recall, we did have uh, new sort of warning indicators uh, as a longtime support guy. I'm a big fan of something that tells me that I have a problem and tells me what I could possibly do to overcome that problem, right? That's genius. Uh, versus stuff that just doesn't work and it causes people to call it tech support people. So uh, what I'm going to do here now is try to overextend the system capabilities of this system so we can see if we can get some of those latency. Uh, I may be completely stalled because I don't see anything moving now. I'm clicking the live cameras and nothing is happening. Okay, there we go. Could have been a te temporary delay. Let's see what we've got here. Again, I'm trying to overwhelm it by launching these all at the same time. Uh, what? You cannot add a camera. Please uncheck one or more. Uh, well, see, I, I see my problem, right? This is not Chrome. This is indeed Internet Explorer. And as I mentioned, six is the max, still the max. So I guess I did this on purpose to show you that Internet Explorer has not been advanced to the 16 screen, but you saw it on my graphic. Uh, and if I were to you know, spend the time to actually do it, we're, we're 15 minutes into the thing, so I don't want to waste your time. Uh, trust me, and if you have any problems, just send me an email and we'll – We'll hash it out, but you can see the six here, and uh, I guess it's a good thing, right, that uh, just by opening six live cameras, it has not showing me any of the latency messages. But you saw them on the slide deck. You know what I'm talking about, and they are beneficial when it does occur. Leads you to, uh, you know, figuring, oh, I got a problem. Let's see if I can overcome it. All right, I'm looking through everything on my list, and I think we've got it covered. Uh, I think we've pretty much uh, mentioned everything that was mentioned on the slide deck. Uh, one of the things that uh, was brought up at the end of the earlier webinar today was uh, the important point to understand that these, you know, there's a lot of cool features in these new uh, latitude updates, 8.0.2 and 8.0.3. And I already know 8.0.4 is around the corner, and uh, my boss, Chris, already has 8.0.5 doing some alpha and beta testing on the front end. Uh, so there, there's even more functionality coming. However, uh, I do want to point out any questions that come up. The, the, the reason that 802 and 803, and this was something that was uh, given to us by our product managers in the earlier webinar, uh, what we've done in the 802 and 803 is actually built the groundwork, uh, the sort of fuselage almost of greater and better things to come uh, when we hit nine and above that. So, um, um, if there's any questions right now, I guess we'll reach back out to Chris and see, uh, manning the question queue right there. And if not, uh, I appreciate people coming and, uh, you know, look forward to the next release where some of this stuff that we've uh, put in place is going to be able to be built upon 
to make 90 and 901 or 902, whatever they use as the naming structure, even better and stronger. So, Chris, any other questions, any follow-ups that we need to address before we let people go back to their day? Hey, Marty, I'm just cleaning up a few questions in the queue, so let's keep it open for a little bit, but uh, I think we're good. Good deal. All right, what I'll do then is I will mute myself, uh, leave the webinar open, as Chris just suggested, in case somebody does want to add a question. Uh, we'll try to knock out any of those questions that uh, you know last at least for the next 12, 13 minutes to the top of the hour. Uh, and with that said, I will let everybody who has no questions uh, get back to their day, and I hope to see you on our next webinar. Thanks a lot.